Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saik and we're playing Legendary Iron Man Difficulty and today we're going to look into episode 2 of our latest supply raid. In the previous episode we killed a pack of 6, a pack of 5 and then a massive pot of 8. But mind you, well, that was a killer pot, Mutant Elite, 2 Super Heavy Mechs, a Mech Sniper, um, one of uh, the mutant, um, uh, the heavy mutant uh, commanders. Uh, we got a shield bearer, a normal um, advent soldier, as well as a um, psionically active sector commander. So, wow, that had been a pretty decent uh, pack, which required a lot of our attention now we're out of any more stealth mechanics so whatever happens from now on is essentially fair game we need to make sure that we position everyone in a good position if possible I'd like to go for an overwatch trap if not possible that's okay as well I guess And we know that expects probably here, so it's pretty fair to say that we don't need to wait that long. Let's try a full overwatch. There we go. That is the trigger we have been waiting for. Ooh, stun answers. And for once our overwatch shots have actually hit someone. I absolutely detest the design decision that they can take shots. Like, this is so stupid. This is stupid on so many levels. We have surprised them. We were in full cover. And essentially they could take a turn and then take a shot. Well, I'm not going to go into that. Again, just an incredibly stupid decision of long war. Can't emphasize that enough. Heavy gunner. Elite Trooper, Stun Lancer, and another Elite Trooper. Let's start with the Mac. Enemy down. So, what else do we have? Could move to here, which isn't a bad idea and start flanking. This could be a kill. Of course not if a 90% shot misses. In that case it is not a kill. Moving up, increasing fortify. We still can throw a flashbang grenade, that's why I wanted to Wait for a second. Hmm. Wound to here would at least give us vision on two of the enemies. We lose the high ground bonus, but we gain full cover. Not the worst of all traits. Let's try to take out the stun lancer. Ah, one damage short. That is unfortunate. On the other hand, this here would be a really nice engagement. 
I think we're okay. We still got Whirlwind to get out of here. And of course we got a protocol. I would suggest we're overwatching. I I think it's a good idea. Setting our weapon. Half cover over here, which is essentially full cover against all of them. And you know, I mean, if you can throw a flashbang, why wouldn't you? This is a shot into full cover plus di disorientation. Still a shot into full cover, or not, in which case we're going to use our sniper to deal with that guy first. All right, here we go. Let's kill him. Nice little hit. This is a flanking spot. Done deal. Ready to engage. And we're going to use our sword Ready after reloading, of course. Holy shit, and he's burning, so he can't really do anything. We're not going to use Whirlwind. The guy's just going to run away. He can't really do anything. Might as well use the rest of our crew to overwatch. Just in case another another pack is going to join us. It's going to take... Um, yeah, he's not even going to take the, uh, the Blade Storm attack. What? Guys, I'm sorry. Ten minutes in and that was just one pack. Ouch. Feels bad, man. I could have done that the last episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I must have mentally missed the pack. Because I was like... There must be another pack, but in reality... We already killed 28. Well, clearly my bad. But we got three promotions, which should make you as happy as it uh, makes me. Fire takes rapid fire, no question, and untouchable, also no question. That's pretty damn good. I like the, the idea of uh, bring it on. For more crit damage, but I don't want to spend XCOM ability points for it. St. Elliot, ooh, finally. I like Coup de Gras. I like Rapid Fire. I also like Reconcealment. Damn it, so many good abilities. I think I still want to go with the melee build for for him. There is there, there can be an argument made like with rapid fire, kill zone, 
potentially change her, which is a little bit redundant if you have re rapid fire. Uh, suppression and traverse fire, I mean. Yeah, but here is the deal. I could take that and we can still take traverse fire, which essentially is giving us a budget version of a rapid fire for free on top of having really, really good abilities. Coup de Gras is awesome. Think about a flashbang and someone's disoriented and you just maw through them with Reaper. That's a good combination. So yeah, we're going to go for it. I like kill zone. Probably not with with his weapon. We would need to give him a better weapon in order to do that. But reverse fire is really uh, versatile because you can stand kind of near an enemy, take a shot, and still have an action afterwards to then slash someone. So it kind of um, further improves your action economy. Yeah, I like it. And finally, Glitch. Tactical Sense is the obvious choice uh, together with uh, Salvo. Probably leaning more towards Salvo because uh, that works with a rocket and with grenades. I definitely like Sentinel. This is awesome. And probably also the Lone Wolf just in case he's standing a bit further to the side. It's a good buff and there is really no debuff. It's just as soon as you're a bit further away you gain plus 10 aim and plus 10 defense. What's not to like? Uh, what What's not to like about that? Salvo is great. I like the quick burn as well. No action is good for hit and run. You can move, then hit the flamethrower, and then essentially do something something else. The flamethrower has two charges. He's carrying a rocket and he's carrying um, a grenade. So I would say Salvo is as good as quick burn. But clearly, quick burn isn't bad either. And let's give him uh, the lone wolf upgrade. Yeah, I got a couple of wounded soldiers, but damn, the loot is worth it. Look at that. Advanced suppressor, hair trigger, advanced scope is good. Four Illyrium cores, it's awesome. And boy oh boy, 20 each, then 150 supplies, corpses, corpses, more corpses. And do we have super heavy mech corpses? No, it's just a normal mech corpse. Well, fuck you. Well, I like the super heavy mech. It was pretty damn good. 38 hit points, 5 armor. That's beefy. Got a nice sharpshooter right there. For the Sounds like some, uh, something we'd like to investigate. An extra soldier never hurts, and getting a sergeant is even better. Let me see if I can field that mission. Alright, and back. I think I found a decent team that could certainly deal with uh, 12 enemies. Uh, we got Kochais, who's leading the mission, Harbringer um, accompanying him, Puppy, our uh, our ranger. We got Sean Sean against us in Assault. Quickfeet is going to be the specialist again, and Pitbull uh, this time is going to be the Grenadier. Overall, a really solid team, kind of our C team, uh, if you will. So I would be hard-pressed to see how they cannot be successful in that mission. 
Hopefully it's even a flawless mission. Having that extra sharpshooter can certainly turn out to be really good. And another engineer. Holy moly. So let's see. Do we have any mission that is about to start? I like the engineer. Got a smash and grab mission here, which is almost done. I think I can't muster enough people. It's just too many missions at the same time. Let me double check if I can find a team. No, we just don't have enough soldiers. I mean, just look at it. If if you look at what we're doing, a couple of training missions, a lot of infiltration, 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 really mildly wounded soldiers, a couple more days and they are back, but more infiltration, more infiltration, more infiltration, more infiltration, more infiltration. So we are just having so many soldiers that are infiltrating and we only got our top, top crew ready to theoretically go in and I want to keep them ready because in a few days what's going to happen is into the fire is going to be done and we want to invade the, um, the warlock which means since this still has seven days we might go into this mission first and then sort of deal with the rest later 15 enemies yeah let's just wait until it's 100 percent infiltrated because maybe then we can prevent them from taking too much damage and essentially afterwards go and infiltrate <laughs> and there's another scientist this is just ridiculous I have so many soldiers, yet I can't do all of the missions. Yeah, three days is too little. I, oh, the game is trolling me so hard at the moment. Prevent resistance data leak. Oh, and we need to do that. You don't want a resistance data leak, because resistance data leak means something else is going to severely uh, fumble afterwards either an attack an infiltration whatever and it's still plenty time to deal with it setting course for the chilean control district same deal though how am i going to fit the squad Definitely need to build more sparks. You know, I'm going to do something which is probably questionable at best, but here's what I'm going to do. All right, wait a second. I appreciate you recruiting new staff for the engineering team, but as it stands, we have people still waiting for an assignment. One, two, three, four, five, six. Staffing a facility. It's kind of an F you reaction. To what the game is currently doing. Let's see if that's going to work out. If not, you can make fun of me after. All right, so <laughs> I put two rookies into uh, the squad just to kind of fill it up and I used uh, Divat here, Iwop, as to be the leader of this pack, and essentially Nasty, who's going to accompany him. Both of them hopefully will carry the mission. It's only 15 enemies, and we're essentially playing with uh, two soldiers plus, yeah, two rookies. Gave them 
basic equipment to survive and basic guns, nothing more. We just hit 100%. It should be good enough to do the mission and prevent uh, the worst from happening. Those two soldiers are not needed for the invasion of the Warlock. I made that uh, sure. But on the other hand, they are very much needed for the actual infiltration of the HQ here. So that will probably be a bit delayed. Now to the second option. No, that's the wrong one. Oh no, that's the right one. Six days, 22 hours. Let me get the team together. Good. This is either going to be um, an absolute crushing victory um, or a hilariously crushing defeat. The idea behind it is to just fill in the ranks and get a couple of promotions for free. So we actually filled that mission with six rookies. And no, I'm not kidding you. We are rescuing a VIP from an advent cell, and if we play our cards right, it might even work out. So the entire equipment of everything together is worth, uh, including the price of uh, the uh, the um, six rookies, is kind of around 250 to 300 supplies, which is as much as a VIP would cost. So it's almost a coin flip. Uh, I could buy the VA, uh, I could buy an engineer from the black market for the same amount, or we're playing the mission, get six promotions, up to six promotions for free, and get an engineer on top of it, or we are simply losing that uh, money. I put in a skull check, so maybe if there is an officer, we can at least um, get that uh, going for us. And worse, if worse comes to worse, they are simply going to um, not do the mission and uh, get a few promotions for free, in which case it wouldn't have been the worst outcome at all. I admit, a pretty interesting way of starting a training for rookies late uh, September, and I'm not sure if this is go really going to work out super well, but we're going to see about this. Anyways, now it's anyways time for a smash and grab mission, because uh, these guys here are ready, and they've waited a long time for a smash and grab mission. It's going to be a difficult one. Again, they have two squaddies on their team, so I was trying to give them as much time as possible to infiltrate, but a smash and grab mission really is just to get some more supplies and yeah uh, basically better the position a bit of a short episode today i apologize for my poor planning should have probably cut uh, one um, pack earlier with the with the other uh, mission and instead uh, kind of put the main fight into this mission but shit happens i learned a bit about um the the timing i really thought there was one more pack in the mission unfortunately that's not the case anyways we're on our way to have a really really successful month number seven uh, we i think have still six or seven missions outstanding i even needed to hire new resources or new rookies because boy oh boy is this war going to become more and more intense and we need reinforcements guys we need the reinforcements the month is still long we have 13 more days and our highlight is going to be for this month uh, the infiltration of the warlock so stay tuned for that it's only two more days until that happens um, for the rest of this episode i thank you and wish you a great evening don't forget to sneak in that like and maybe leave a comment down below uh, it is uh, almost appreciated, uh, always appreciated. Take care and see you on the next mission, guys. Bye bye.